Good evening. I believe we are live. So welcome to this evening's Psych Star Scheme information evening. We are really pleased to have you joining us. And thank you for giving up your time this evening. We really appreciate that. The session is being recorded. I have dropped some information in the chat. And just let you know that we will have a Q&A session at the end. So if you do have any questions throughout the evening, please submit them via the Q&A function and we'll do our best to have them answered this evening. If any questions are not answered live, then you will be able to get answers to your questions after tonight. So the session is running until 8 p.m. and it will be recorded and uploaded to our website after today. So if you can't stay for the whole evening, you will be able to catch up. I'm really pleased to introduce, actually, first of all, I should introduce myself, which I realize I haven't done. My name is Hayley Shaw and I'm a careers coordinator at the college. I'm going to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Declan Highland. Dr. Highland is a consultant in general adult psychiatry at Clockview Hospital in Liverpool. He has a long-standing interest in undergraduate medical education and is the undergraduate psychiatry lead at Liverpool Medical School. Dr. Highland is the lead clinician for the Psych Star Scheme since its inception in 2019. And in December 2022, he was appointed the RC Psych Associate Dean for Chew Psychiatry and Recruitment at the college. Very pleased to hand over to Declan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hayley, for that uh, kind introdu introduction. It's great to uh, see so many people here this evening. I see we've just topped over 100 uh, delegates to uh, this evening. So that's fantastic uh, that you've all given up your time. Let's find out a little bit more about the Psych Star Scheme. Uh, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about the scheme, and I'm just going to share my screen um, and just share a few slides with you, if that's okay, um, just to kind of give you a bit of an introduction, really, uh, to the Psych Star Scheme and tell you a little bit about it, actually, because I'm aware that some of you that are here tonight may have heard of the Psych Star Scheme before. Some of you may not have heard of the Psych Star Scheme uh, at all. So um, I'm going to give you a little bit of an introduction um, so first and foremost, in, in terms of what the Psych Star Scheme is, well, it's been around now since 2019. Um, and the scheme was set up at a time when the college had been running a very successful uh, scheme called the Pathfinder Fellowship, which was a um, three-year scheme for medical students who had a specific interest in academic psychiatry. And um, the Psych Star Scheme uh, came uh, on the back of that in 2019. And it's a scheme that runs over uh, 12 months, uh, and it usually runs from the 1st of September to the 31st of August or 1st of September the following year. Um, and really, since 2019, what we've had is an increasing number of psych stars appointed. So usually what happens is that the college will appoint 10 psych stars. Um, and then what's happened over the last couple of years, uh, and is going to happen again this year, uh, for this uh, forthcoming cohort of psych stars is that the different faculties of the college are also funding their own psych star um, and we've actually got 12 of the college faculties who've agreed to fund a psych star for the next cohort now some of you may be aware of some of the college faculties uh, some of the more well-known ones like the older adults psychiatry faculty the forensic faculty um, and the general adult faculty, but there are other perhaps lesser well-known faculties like the liaison psychiatry faculty, perinatal uh, psychiatry faculty, neuropsychiatry, etc. Um, so 12 of the 13 college faculties are going to fund a psych star uh, for the 2023-24 cohort. So it's really great uh, to have them on board and it, uh, it means that we can appoint more psych stars as well. Um, and actually this will be the uh, highest number of psych stars that we will have appointed since the scheme began in 2019. Now it's open to uh, medical students who are enrolled on a full-time UK medicine degree uh, for the full duration of the scheme. So what that means is that you can't be uh, going into your final year of your undergraduate studies, or you can't be a final year student at the moment uh, applying for the scheme um, because you have to 
be enrolled on the medicine course throughout the duration of the 12 months. Um, students who are intercalating are certainly eligible to apply, and I'm aware that lots of medical students now uh, in UK medical schools are intercalating and that they do that in different years of their undergraduate study. Um, so if you're intercalating, that's absolutely fine. You, you are eligible to apply for the Site Star Scheme. Um, one of the things that we do ask is that all applicants uh, for the Site Star Scheme are student associates of the college. So if you're not a student associate yet, do have a look at the college website at www.rcsite.ac.uk uh, and that will uh, provide you with details of how you become a student associate. Lots of benefits to becoming uh, a student associate, so that is something that you would have to do. Um, now, if you've applied to the Saxar scheme before and were unsuccessful, that doesn't mean that you can't apply again. So we very much welcome uh, applications from medical students who've applied uh, last year or the previous year who were unsuccessful, please do um, apply again. You are eligible to apply again. Um, and similarly, uh, any students who are concerned about having, having any sort of health condition or any sort of mental or physical disability, that is um, not an exclusion criterion at all. We would absolutely encourage you to apply to the scheme as well. Uh, you know, so do, do please consider applying. Um, as I said, um, all medical schools across the UK um, are eligible for the Psych Star Scheme. So I'm aware there's a lot of newer medical schools now that are popping up. So, um, you know, one of the things that um, I would certainly suggest you do is, is, is try and identify your undergraduate lead at your medical school to support you. And what we're really wanting to do is um, recruit those medical students who have got an interest in psychiatry uh, and they can demonstrate evidence of this interest. And you know, ideally, what we want is for these people to then become ambassadors for the specialty, uh, not only at sort of local level, but also regional level, national level as well. Uh, so to be real ambassadors for, for psychiatry as a specialty within medicine. Um, and you may or may not have heard of the college's foundation fellowship scheme. This is another scheme that runs at a later stage of undergraduate training. So you have to be a final year medical student to be eligible for the RC Psych Foundation Fellowship. You can still apply for the Foundation Fellowship uh, if you apply to the Psych Star Scheme and are appointed. Okay, so it doesn't mean that you're not then eligible to apply for the Foundation Fellowship. So what are the benefits of the Psych Star Scheme? Well, I think, you know, that there are lots of benefits, but I think, um, you know, from certainly talking to all of the Psych Stars uh, over the years, the one that seems to be uh, the most important one is the uh, benefit of mentoring. So one of the things that we do with the Psych Star scheme is that each Psych Star will be allocated a, a mentor who's a senior psychiatrist, so maybe a consultant psychiatrist, or it may be a, an SAS doctor, specialty doctor, or possibly even a higher trainee in psychiatry. And that mentor will be matched according to the uh, area of interest or interests identified by the Psych Star. And what we also do is preferentially try and geographically match the mentor as well. And that just makes things like face to face meetings easier if that's something that the psych star and the mentor wish to do. There are lots of the uh, lots of the meetings between mentor and psych star these days are taking place virtually via MS Teams or Zoom. Uh, it seems to certainly be the way forward. Obviously, this makes things a lot easier as well. Um, and what we do at the beginning of the year is we run a welcome and introduction evening at the college. So at the start of the scheme, uh, and that's an opportunity to meet um, your fellow psych stars in person at the college building in London. It's also an opportunity to meet myself as the uh, lead clinician of the scheme, but also the college officers as well. Um, uh, and to essentially have a bit of a social uh, gathering, really, so that we can get to know each other better. And it's a, it's a way of introducing you to the college uh, and to the uh, scheme specifically. I think one of the other really great benefits is the fact that you get uh, free attendance at the four day International Congress that the college runs. Um, and there is a contribution towards travel and accommodation. Um, and for those of you that never had the uh, privilege of going to the International Congress, it really is a fantastic academic uh, meeting over four days, which brings together world renowned speakers, um, you know, sort of talking about sort of latest research updates in psychiatry um, and education and training, leadership management, a really varied program over the four days. And as a psych star, you will get to attend all four days. Uh, and we, what we usually do is have a Psych Stars breakfast as well, 
uh, on one of the um, on one of the days at the Congress, which again is a chance to have a, a social gathering. Um, you'll have access to the college's CPD online modules. There's currently about 180 of them on the college website, as well as podcasts as well. And there's about 90 podcasts available. So you'll have free access to them as a psych star, as well as free access to trainees online, uh, which is um, essentially e-learning that supports uh, our core trainees uh, or SHOs in psychiatry who are preparing for their college membership exams, their MRC psych exams. So if you want to really kind of advance your own uh, learning uh, and knowledge of psychiatry, you've got access to uh, trainings online or TRON, uh, as well as free subscriptions as well to the journals. So British Journal of Psychiatry and the uh, BJ Psych Bulletin as well. So you get free subscriptions to them for the year. And perhaps uh, all, equally as importantly is the CPD fund. So there is a fund available of £525 for each psych star, and you can use that to allow you to attend conferences of interest in specific areas of psychiatry uh, that, that may be of interest to you or that you want to find out more about or any particular courses, uh, any sort of events of interest. Uh, and that fund can also be used towards your medical elective as well. So if you're thinking of um, doing a medical elective in an area of psychiatry, uh, you can use uh, that CPD uh, fund. Um, you know, um, uh, some of the psych stars will ask about, you know, can they use it to buy things like psychiatry textbooks, uh, et cetera? I, I would certainly support that. And what I would say is that your mentor, um, you know, is the person to consult in relation to uh, the appropriateness of, of what you want to spend the funds on. But certainly things like textbooks uh, is, is something that... Um, uh, we would support you spending the CPD uh, money on. So what are the expectations? If you become a psych staff, you're successfully appointed to the scheme. Well, we would want you to attend the introduction event at the start of the scheme. And I, I, and I think that's really important, um, you know, not least because it's an opportunity for you to be uh, formally welcomed to the college um, and, you know, to meet those who are involved in the psych staff scheme and, and to meet the college officers as well. You know, there's a lot of interest at the college in the Psych Star scheme um, across the board, and this has been a very successful recruitment initiative that we've run. So it's really great to be able to meet all the Psych Stars at the introduction event. And we would normally ask Psych Stars to make that first contact with their mentor within the first couple of weeks of the scheme. Now, although the scheme is only 12 months in duration, there's no reason at all why that uh, relationship with your mentor can't continue beyond the 12 months. I think one of the great things about this scheme is that it allows you to make those contacts and do some networking, um, and that can open up doors uh, for the future for you as um, you know psych the psychiatrists of tomorrow, yeah. So as junior doctors, so um, we ask you to make that initial contact at an early stage, and use that initial meeting to try and set a plan for the year. What what do you want? to get out of your um, 12 months with the scheme? You know, are there specific objectives that you want to meet? So your mentor is there to try and help you to set that plan for, for the year. And we do ask that uh, Psych Stars maintain regular contact with their mentor. Um, and there, there are, of course, various ways and means of doing this. And, you know, they may be through sort of virtual meetings or face-to-face -face meetings. Sometimes it's just through uh, email as well. Um, the mentors... Uh, are very aware that the psych stars will be sort of contacting them on a regular basis. Um, you know, with the mentors themselves, sometimes they're, they're particularly busy. They may not be able to respond straight away. Um, and, you know, we, we we do encourage you as psych stars to um, let us know if you're having any issues at all with maintaining that regular contact uh, with mentors. But the mentors are, are very much um, volunteering to take on the role. So they're, they're as invested in the scheme as you guys are uh, as psych stars. And one of the things that we do is every few months we arrange uh, virtual catch up sessions. So uh, where myself and um, Haley uh, catch up with all the site stars just to see how things are going, uh, just to identify any particular issues, and really just to kind of get an idea about what the site stars are up to. You know what they've been using the CPD funds for, um, and perhaps doing a bit of idea sharing, uh, thinking about sort of working collaboratively. Uh, with other site stars on small projects or arranging events, etc. So we arrange those catch-up sessions every few months, and it's just a way of ensuring uh, that you feel properly supported by the college throughout your 12 months with the scheme. And I guess most importantly, being a site star is about being an ambassador for psychiatry and promoting the scheme at a local level. 
one of the things that I think uh, has really impressed me over the last couple of years is just how much more interest there is now in the Psych Stars scheme, particularly at um, medical schools across the UK, uh, which are so perhaps newer medical schools and have less well-established psych socks and recruitment initiatives, et cetera. So, you know, we really want you guys uh, as Psych Stars to promote the scheme, encourage your peers to apply uh, for the scheme for the um, next year's cohort, et cetera, um, and, and really sort of, um, you know, sell the, the benefits of being involved with the Psych Stars scheme. Okay, so uh, I'd be happy to address any questions. I know we've got a dedicated Q&A session at the end, uh, so I'm under strict instructions not to answer any questions now. Uh, but it gives me great pleasure to hand over to uh, Hayley, who's going to talk you through the application process uh, itself. Thank you very much, Declan. It was really great to hear from you. I'm sure everyone found it really, really useful. I am now just going to share my slides. Just bear with me. Okay, I'm hoping that I have shared them correctly. No, that's a no. Is it okay though? Hayley, it's just not on slideshow mode. Can you put it on slideshow mode? Just bear with me. I'm going to try again. Okay, I think I'm nearly there. Just bear with me. Yeah, good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for bearing with me, everyone. So my name is Hayley Shaw, and I'm a careers coordinator working at the college in the training workforce team. And I'm really pleased to be here this evening to talk to you about what I feel is an excellent scheme. And first of all, I'm going to talk to you about one of the things that you're probably most wanting to know about this evening if you are interested in the scheme, and that is the application process. Now, you will notice that there isn't any detailed information about this on our website just yet, and that is deliberate because the application window opens tomorrow at 9 a.m., so keep your eyes peeled because everything that I'm going to go through now, you don't have to scribble it all down. You have to write it down. It will be published at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. And the application window will close at Tuesday, the 4th of April at 12 midnight. And we won't accept applications after that time. In terms of the application process, first of all, I'm going to talk to you about the application pr process for the college psych star positions. Now the college psych star positions, there are 10 of these to apply for, and you should submit the following to careers at rcpsych.ac.uk in one single PDF document. And it's really important that it is in 12 point font with all of your identifying information removed. That includes your name, address, medical school, any named institutions, organizations, or individuals. Now, what you will need to submit for the college psych star position is listed in these points, one to five. A CV on one side of A4, a list of any previous awards, prizes, or bursaries, whether they're from the RC psych, other rural colleges, universities, charities, or other organizations. And then you will need to provide your answers to the following three questions. How do you propose to spend the Psychstar CPD travel fund of 525 pounds? What do you hope to achieve in your career as a psychiatrist? Please outline how you will prepare for this both personally and professionally. And describe a situation with a patient which made you reflect. Now you'll notice that for each of those three questions, the word count is 500 words. 
Declan mentioned that we have faculty psych staff positions available this year for 12 of the 13 faculties and they are listed here. If you want to apply for a faculty psych star position, you'll need to submit everything that I've just mentioned on the previous slide in points one to five in the same format, so in one PDF, and you will submit an answer to the faculty specific question. These questions will be published on our website tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Things to consider when applying to the college psych star and the faculty psych star position. You should consider the college values and behaviors when completing your application. And there's a link to these that will be shared on the website tomorrow. You can apply for both the college psych star position and faculty specific psych star positions. You can apply to more than one faculty psych star position. And really important, if you are applying to multiple positions in your application, please make it clear your preference so that if you were offered the college psych star and two faculty psych star positions, we would know which one would be your preference to take up and to accept. I just wanted to talk to you briefly about the support that the college can offer you if you were successful and appointed to the psych star scheme the college psych star or the faculty psych star. Declan has already mentioned that we offer a number of meetings for psych stars throughout the year, which is a great opportunity for you to check in, for Declan to check in on how you are getting on, for you to network with each other and identify opportunities to collaborate on different projects. We can link you in with your local college division who might be able to get you involved in different events and different things going on in your location. We will ensure your mentoring is going well and make sure that you're getting the most that you possibly can from that benefit of the scheme. We will support you in accessing your funding. As Declan mentioned, we'll support you in arranging your ticket, travel and accommodation for your place at International Congress 2024. And we have a dedicated mailbox which you can send questions to and access support throughout the scheme. So after today, as I've said, tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., all this information that I've just gone through will be published on our website, on the Psych Star Scheme webpage, which I will drop again into the chat before the end of today's session. And I'll also make sure that you have the careers email for any questions that you have which aren't answered in the Q&A today. So thank you so much for listening. And I'm going to end my slideshow. Okay, and next I'm going to introduce you to our first Psych Star speaker this evening, who has kindly given up their time to talk to you about their experience on the scheme so far. So I'm going to introduce you to Emma Smith, who is a year four medical student at Anglia Ruskin University and is our current forensic faculty Psych Star. Thank you so much, over to you, Emma. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay, I'm going to just share my slides if I can do that. Um, I'm rubbish at stuff like this, so you're going to have to tell me if I've done it right. <laughs> Has that worked? It's just loading. Okay, fine. Maybe just come out of it and try again. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. No. Is that what? It did something. It did something. Try again. Okay. Um... Has that worked now? You're muted, but I, yeah, okay, fine. Um, right, let me just make it bigger. Yeah, if you just click on from, there you go, you got it. That worked? Perfect. Perfect, okay. Good. Go ahead. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, yeah, so hi everyone, I'm Emma. I'm a fourth year medical student. 
I am just going to talk a little bit about my background and sort of the reasons why I applied. Um, so years one to three, I was at Anglia Ruskin University. Um, pretty standard. I didn't really do any extracurricular things. Um, I was very, very focused on just passing my exams. And also, I didn't really know what I wanted to do in the future. Um, so I did and a short essay prize, but I came third, so it wasn't, wasn't hugely significant. And then as I was getting into year three, I kind of realized that um, I was interested in things like ethics and law and forensic psychiatry. I kind of came across it and realized that it combines quite a lot of my interests. So where it had just been COVID, we hadn't really have a, had any placement. So I arranged to do a week at a medium secure hospital. Um, which was really good and kind of confirmed my interest in it. So I thought I may as well apply for the Sight Star scheme, even though I hadn't really done much um, psychiatry related things. I think when I applied, I hadn't actually done my psychiatry block at university um, and I was unsuccessful the first time. Um, but then I went on to do my intercalation at the University of Liverpool. So I did a master's in essentially medical law. And towards the end of that kind of honed in on mental health law, I did my dissertation on the Mental Health Act reforms. And then by that point, they'd introduced a faculty specific psych star. Um, so I applied for the forensic one and I was successful that time. And I'll come on to talk about why I think that might have been um, compared to the previous year. So now I'm in my fourth year back at ARU um, and obviously I'm on the psych star scheme now. So I'll talk a little bit about um, what I've been doing. And then just for context next year, um, I have two student selected components, which I'm starting to think about organizing. And also my elective is in fifth year as well. Um, so the sort of things that I've been doing, I think you can kind of split it into um, the mentorship, networking aspects of it, and then the financial side as well. So I was really, really lucky and I got um, allocated two mentors um, who are fantastic forensic psychiatrists one works more clinically and one does more academic work which has been really handy for me um, the main thing that I'm really doing with them is I'm doing a research project with a charity or sort of trying to set that up um, I've been invited by them to present it at the forensic faculty conference which would be, will be a first for me it's a really good opportunity and also starting to think about electives as well they're going to help me with that and then in terms of networking, they invited me to, um, it was one virtual and then one in-person executive committee meeting, which might sound a bit boring, but it's actually a really good insight into um, sort of how the faculty works as a whole, the sort of things that they're doing. And it was a really good opportunity to meet um, more forensic psychiatrists than just my mentors as well. And then obviously a, um, a part of the scheme is networking with um, other people, other med students that are on it. So we've had a couple of events at the college, we have a group chat, like we all are sort of getting to know each other. And then the money side of things, um, electives I have put there, I'm hoping that anything that I have left over, I'm going to be able to use towards booking things for next year, because obviously I won't be on the scheme when that happens. Um, but I've also used it to attend the Eastern Division Conference, which is in Cambridge, and then I am going to the Forensic Faculty Conference as well. And Another thing that I thought I would point out, I assume it's staying the same next year, but your funding for Psych Star events, like going to the college, doesn't come out of the same fund, which I think is a really good um, benefit because you're not disadvantaged regardless of where you are in the country. You can still attend those in-person events. And then my application was very similar to what Hayley said. So it was uh, my CV, my answers to uh, the Royal College's questions, which were very slightly different, but largely the same and then my specific application to the faculty as well. Um, I didn't have to interview for mine, um, but I know some people did, so other people are better to answer questions about that. Um, where to start with your application? I kind of thought about it as what I've already done and then what I want to do next. So I think this is probably where I fell down in the first application round. I really hadn't done very much and I also didn't know what I really wanted to get out of it so I kind of had to think about that by the second time around um, and that was definitely a much stronger application I'd also done my intercalation by that point um, so it was definitely I had more to show for my interest um, and then I have put there if you applied and were unsuccessful think about why that was and what you can do about it 
And then in terms of making the most out of it, I would say be prepared and definitely have some ideas. I mean, you kind of need that for your application anyway. But I know when I first sat down with my mentors, the first thing they said to me was basically, what do you want to do? And I had some vague ideas, but I really didn't know anything specific. Um, so I've also put that be open minded because they are very experienced, very keen, and they had a lot of really good ideas. So I sort of said, maybe um, want to do more sort of research because I've never done something like that. And they had loads and loads of suggestions. Um, so kind of let them lead with that one. And then connecting with other psych stars, but then not just them, anyone else that you come across with like on the scheme. They Sorry, they don't have to be on the scheme, but anybody else who you come across with um, the same sort of interest, definitely connect with them. I know that I've been put in touch with a few med students who are also presenting at faculty conference um, and then a couple of other people and just because they're not on the scheme, like we have the, the very, very similar interests um, and being in touch with them is definitely a huge benefit that was through the scheme, but kind of indirectly. And then that was all I had, but I did see one question um, already that was to do with mentorship after um, the scheme finishes. And I just wanted to quickly comment on that. I think another thing to make the most out of it is definitely try and develop a long lasting relationship. I know the bit of research that I'm looking to do with my mentor, we're already six or seven months into the scheme and I haven't, we haven't really even got an ethics committee approval for that yet. Um, so we're looking at that being more of a long term thing. So it's definitely something that you could do and something that I would recommend. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to take questions, but I think um, we might be taking them at the end. I'm not sure, Hayley. Yes, that's right, Emma. We're going to um, answer those questions at the end. Thank you. OK, yeah, that's all I had then. So I'll stop sharing. Thank you so much, Emma. That was really, really great to hear. And I'm sure that people interested in the scheme would have found that really helpful. So if you do have any questions for Emma, do submit them to the chat because we're very grateful that all three psych styles speaking today are going to stay for our Q&A session. So I am now going to introduce our second psych star who's on our current psych star scheme. And this is Michael Mateus Gratzik. Apologies if I've spelt your surname wrong. And Michael is a fifth year medical student at Cambridge and is one of our college psych stars. So over to you, Michael. Thank you, Hayley. Um, I'm just trying to share my um, screen. If you need help, let us know. I might do it actually. Would you mind sharing them for me? I can't That's seem to have been in your window. Thank George you. Put them up there um, for you now. Thank you, Hayley. Um, yes, good evening, everyone. Um, as Hayley said, my name is Michael. I'm in my penultimate year uh, at the University of Cambridge. Um, and yes, I'm just hoping to tell you a little bit more about my experience on the scheme. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? So a couple of words about me. Um, I have a very big interest in um, academic psychiatry and I'm very much hoping to have a significant um, research um, career in the future. And um, I know Dr. Highland and Emma have talked a lot about already about the benefits of the scheme. And one of them is um, the career development fund that we've got. And um, the first example of how um, psych star scheme has benefited me was just last October when I had a chance to travel to um, the European College of Neuropsychopharmacology Congress in Vienna, Austria, where I had a chance to showcase um, some of the work I undertook in addiction psychiatry um, with my poster and a short oral presentation. Um, and I used some of my um, allowance to cover the travel fees there. Um, my second example uh, is pictured here at the bottom of the slide. Um, this year, I had the pleasure of serving on my med school psych sub committee as our annual conference organizer. And it was a rather huge task um, that took an entire football team to uh, pull off, as you can see in uh, the picture of our committee. Um, the college has really supported me um, by linking me up with the representatives in the East of uh, England region, um, uh, both for uh, directors of education 
and uh, psychiatry, uh, higher training, but also uh, foundation trainees, and they really helped me spread the word um, about the conference. And in the end, it actually uh, took place um, just about two weeks ago. We gathered over 100 attendees um, and eight speakers. Um, we discussed the theme of brain-body interactions in psychiatry, uh, which is something I'm very passionate about. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? So another great benefit um, that was mentioned is the mentoring um, and as well as careers guidance, um, the mentors can really link you up with many different people. I am currently planning my elective in the um, summer holiday period coming up at the end of this year. And um, my mentor has put me in touch with researchers at Charité, which is a medical university in Berlin, where I'm really looking forward to spending two weeks. And I will also spend another week um, in the um, bottom left corner in the slide um, in Mannheim at the Central Institute of Mental Health. Now, both of these are really internationally renowned centers uh, which research addictions, uh, which is very much a field I'm interested in. And I am very lucky that um, my mentor, she's an uh, um, internationally renowned researcher and leader in um, the field of addiction psychiatry. And um, I had a chance to publish some of the work I undertook last year uh, in cocaine addictions. Um, you can look up the article, uh, the QR code. Um, and really my mentor has been uh, amazing in really inspiring me to think a little bit broader about not just the research side of things, but also um, the sort of systems level and um, how the drug and alcohol services work in the country. And uh, yet another benefit, uh, last but not least, is the International Congress, which uh, all psych stars are expected to attend. Uh, this year will be taking place in Liverpool. And I'm very much looking forward to uh, attending. Can I have the next slide, please? Um, so yeah, just a um, couple of tips uh, from me, and I think as well as things that are essential, things that are not, perhaps. So when I was applying, at the end of last year, I had virtually no um, clinical psychiatry exposure. Uh, all my psychiatry placements took place this year once I was already on the scheme. So while it is definitely desirable or even essential to have a keen interest in pursuing psychiatry as a career, it's definitely not essential to um, have this um, sort of hospital experience. Now, even though I am on the psych -so committee at my school this year. That's not actually something that um, I was anticipating to do. It almost came about as, as an accident last September, which was well after I've, I've applied. So you definitely don't need elaborate uh, positions to, um, you know, to count or to, to get um, the points. What you do need is to demonstrate in whatever way you can for engagement in um, anything that might be happening uh, within your sort of reach um, that is somehow related to psychiatry. Um, I would say, and um, Dr. Hannon and Haley, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you don't need to know exactly um, how you're going to spend your budget. But what I do think is a good idea to be able to demonstrate by understand for benefits, not just financial, but also for broader benefits that are being spoken about today and how you're going to use them and appreciate them. And I know I spoke a lot about my research work and um, the conferences I attended, but that's definitely not a prerequisite either. I just happen to have a big interest in um, this sort of side of things as I come from very much neuroscience, uh, behavioral, biological psychology background. Uh, but it doesn't, you don't need to um, have a key interest in research. You could be well interested in things like leadership or medical education, um, as long as it's somehow related uh, to psychiatry. And on that note, uh, I'll end and I'll be delighted to take any questions at the end. Thank you so much, Michael, for that really interesting and hopefully inspiring 
presentation. It was really, really great to hear from you and great that you will be here for our Q&A at the end of the session. So I'm really pleased to introduce you to our third and final Psychstar speaker for this evening. Our next speaker is Tommaso Squarey. If I've pronounced your surname wrong, I'm very sorry. Um, you'll correct me. And you are in your fourth year at King's and one of our 10 college psych stars. Over to you, Tommaso. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hayley. And can you all hear me? Uh, it's actually a bit crackly. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Sorry. So basically, I've had some Wi Fi connections. But uh, hopefully I'll be able to, to give my presentation anyways. But let me know okay. if it's too bad and I can stop. Let's see how we go. It's okay for now. Okay, fantastic. So I'm trying to share my slides, but I have some uh, difficulties. Do you have my slides by any yes, chance? Yes, George is going to share them. There you go. Thank you very fantastic. much. Okay, thank great, you. Great awesome. organization. Well, so um, good evening, everyone. And thank you to the organizer. Uh, organizers of the um, the event this evening and again apologies if um, um, you will experience some interruptions during my talk but unfortunately the wi-fi has played a joke on me over the last few days um, anyways um, I thought about sort of um, framing um, my my presentation tonight on three main areas um, that have been benefited I've been benefiting a lot uh, through the scheme this year. So uh, if we can go to the next slide, please. Thank you very much. And, and the three main areas I'd like to focus on are the more sort of experience side of things, um, the relations and network, depending on how you want to call it, and obviously the mentorship component, which um, as we heard already is, is a key aspect of, of the scheme. So next slide, please. Thank you. Now, in terms of experience, there's a lot I could talk about, but I thought it was nice to, to share one big experience which I had. And this was um, thanks to the bursary, which covered for the travel and accommodation costs. And this was back in October when I was able to join the, um, the 49th Congress of the Italian Society of Psychiatry in a beautiful uh, city, which is Genoa in the, in the north of, of Italy. And, and this was really an amazing opportunity because it was the first time I was able to um, experience professional interactions um, with people who share similar interests um, within my home country, which is Italy, as you can tell from the accent, I guess. Uh, so I was there for four days. Um, and, uh, and again, I met medical students, trainees, uh, more senior clinicians, and, and it was a great, um, a great chance really to, to sort of uh, compare the similarities and differences between the education of psychiatry um, and the specialty programs between Italy and the UK and, and, and generally how, how it is practiced in these two um, contexts. Um, and this was fully covered by the bursary. It wouldn't have been possible without the support of the, of the Psych Star scheme. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. And these are just a few pictures I'd like to share as you can tell, I'm a very bad photographer, but uh, I just thought it would be nice to share some uh, sort of uh, hotspots from the city. It's a, it's, a, it's a great city, by the way, if you, if, you have, uh, have, uh, if you ever happen to be in town, great food, pesto, focaccia, just to name some examples. And in the middle, you see um, uh, a picture from the, the Congress itself, where we had a talk by Professor Preby, who actually uh, teaches social psychiatry at Queen Mary University in London and gave us a presentation in Italian, which was which was fabulous. Um, so yes, this was uh, really a great opportunity to which I'm thankful um, to, to the college for, for supporting me in this. Next slide, please. Um, in terms of the relations and network side of things, as, as, as Haley mentioned already, and Declan too actually, um, there are a number of social activities and events that are organized throughout the Psych Star uh, scheme year. We had an introductory evening back in September. This was, a, again, a great opportunity to, to meet um, the fellow Psych Stars on, on the scheme this year. We had a, uh, an online Christmas catch-up back in December where we touched base about 
um, some of the things we've gained um, at the time and give some feedback about how the scheme was going. And then I, I know there was a great dinner last week, which unfortunately I couldn't attend at last minute, but I had um, I heard great feedback from it. It was an in-person dinner at the college, so I thought it was it was worth mentioning. But I guess the main thing, and, and I just ask you to, to to go to the next part of the slide. Thank you very much. Just one more um, click. Thank you. Um, and and you know, amongst the many things that you can gain through these relations and, and people you meet or projects, and this is just an example of something I've been working with uh, two other fellow psych stars, um, Anne and, and Valerie. Um, which is a lecture series that is actually ongoing at the moment on, on the legal and ethical aspects of psychiatry, or rather some legal and ethical aspects of psychiatry. We had the privilege of hearing from Professor Keane um, in January, Dr. Mong two weeks ago, and actually there's another um, lecture coming up tomorrow um, where we will hear a little bit more about the ethics of compulsory treatment in psychiatry from, from Dr. Owen. Um, and then next uh, sort of uh, bullet point. Thank you very much. And obviously, the RC Psych International Congress, as it's already been mentioned, is, is probably the uh, sort of main event in terms of, 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 of making those relations, of meeting people or learning from one another. And although this is something that has happened yet, it will happen in Liverpool this summer. I thought it was nice mentioning it um, as I had the, the, the great opportunity to attend last year's Congress. And if we go to the next slide, I just added um, some, some pictures of it, um, which um, happened in, in Edinburgh in July. And, and this has definitely been uh, sort of quite changing for me in terms of my experience within psychiatry, because you really get to, to hear about uh, groundbreaking research in all areas of, of this, this, this discipline from you know, molecular neuroscience through to psychosocial interventions, medical education. And you do this in the context of um, you know, hundreds of delegates, many of whom are, are students with, with, with whom you can, you can share your experiences and, um, and interests and curiosities uh, from, from psychiatry. And I have to say, although it was, it was great to attend, it was quite an expensive experience. Um, because I had to pay for my tickets, my my uh, my accommodation, and my my travel costs. Uh, but through the Psych Stars this um, scheme this year, this will totally be fully covered by um, by the college. So I'm really looking forward to that, and I'm sure it will be as great, if not better, um, experience than, than than last year. Next next slide, please. Thank you. And uh, finally, I, I just wanted to mention the mentorship um, because. Um, it's it, it's really quite unique to be able to have um, regular interactions on a one-to-one -one basis with um, a senior clinician or academic or, or both indeed um, who who share similar interests. These are just some of the things we've been exploring with with my mentor in particular career progress in terms of um, possible uh, choices in terms of um, deaneries where to do my my um, my foundation school programs or my specialty training afterwards reading advice with my mentor we happen to be big readers and we've he's been sharing uh, some suggestions around introductory textbooks and more and where to start from that and then obviously um, gaining contacts in terms of of uh, increasing my clinical experience within psychiatry, I mentioned the fact I mentioned to him the fact that I wanted to um, to try um, and and spend a few a few days in within addiction psychiatry, and he put me in contact with um, a clinician who works in Lambeth in London in a drug and alcohol service, and I'm hoping to be able to spend a few days there. When I'm back from my current placement in in Swindon, so these are just some of the of the things we discussed. But uh, overall, um, regardless of what your interests are and and who you get allocated in terms of mentor, it's um, it's it, it, it's it's probably one of the key um, aspects that, from which I've gained um, in terms of of the scheme this year. And then lastly, um, if we can uh, go to my talk tips slides thank you very much um I, from this year compared to last year but um i think these still apply so last year we had a question on um sort of um 
what it is that we wanted to achieve through the scheme and a second question about what our future goals are in terms of psychiatry and how we plan to get there. Um, there is no right or wrong answer, obviously, but from my experience, um, it was useful to be quite clear about what I wanted to achieve through the scheme. I obviously, I'm not, I don't mean how to spend every penny of the bursary, but at least some examples. And this can be anything from um, an event or a course you would like to uh, to attend and you want to use the bursary for or a project you'd like to sort of um, talk about with other psych stars or any interest you'd like to expand during the year. And then in terms of the second part of the application, when it asked about um, sort of our future goals and, and aspirations within psychiatry, I think it's useful to provide, again, some, some specific examples about um, your commitment and passion to, to this area. Again, they don't have to be particular sort of elaborate examples. I know some of you will be first year, second years, or don't have enough experience uh, clinically uh, in psychiatry, but I can even just mention uh, a, a, you know, an encounter you had or a book you read or a project you've been working on. Um, and I guess the underlying tip, tip here is, is just to, to find a common thread or a narrative in your application um, just to emphasize um, sort of uh, that, that you have clear in mind what it is that the psych star scheme will, will help you with. Um, and this doesn't have to be, uh, as I mentioned, uh, super specific or super elaborate, uh, but I think it would be useful to, to show some coherence in the different parts of, of the applications. So I think that's it for me. I hope there weren't too many interruptions. Obviously do send me any emails if you have any questions. And I'm delighted to answer any uh, in the next half an hour or so. Thank you very much. Did thank it work? You. Yes, yes. It, it worked well. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, there you go. It, it all worked out all right on the night. Thank you. Um, it was really great to hear from you. Um, some really good tips there, which I hope you will all um, remember. I hope you found helpful. So I'm really, really pleased that we have extra time than we thought we would have to go on to our Q&A session. So I can see that at the moment we have 16 questions in the chat. Um, so what I will do is I will start going through those and then I will direct them either to Declan or one of our current psych stars or I might answer myself. So I'm going to start from the top. The first question, which I think I will ask Declan to answer is, has the admissions process changed in any way compared to last year? No, I mean, the application process itself hasn't changed in terms of the questions uh, that are asked and the way we uh, score the applications and shortlist them uh, and do interviews for the shortlisted applicants. The only real change is the fact that uh, we've got 12 faculties who are funding Psych Stars for 2023-24 as opposed to seven currently uh, for this current cohort. So that's the only real change. But the application process itself is, is, is the same. Thank you, Declan. OK, the second question, which I think I might put to our Psych Stars, uh, what things do people usually use the funding for? I see most people use it for electives, but is it possible to use for summer research placements or just purely conferences throughout the year? Would one of our psych stars like to contribute to that question? Emma? I can answer Thank that. You. Um, I think you can pretty much use it for whatever you want. And I actually think while you do have to put in the application what sort of things you want to use your money for, stuff has come up this year that I was not expecting to come up and different conferences and events and projects and opportunities have come up that I didn't know would be a thing. So while I kind of had an idea that I would need some funding for conferences and things, I don't think that you can plan to rigidly. And I think that when you speak to your mentors and kind of get a plan for the year, that's actually the best time to kind of figure out what you want to use it on. I don't know if anybody has anything to add. Thank you, Emma. Um, did anybody else have anything to add to that? I think, um, you know, the bottom line is you can use a bursary for anything that um, sort of contributes to, to developing your interest 
um, within psychiatry. So it doesn't have to be uh, necessarily um, an elective conference, something where you know you go physically um, or, or an experience, as I as I called it. It can even be textbooks. It can even be online courses. I think I think there's there's quite a bit of flexibility from the college in that sense, which is great because we all have different ways of learning, and and things that we want to achieve. Um, so so yes, I think there's there's quite a good level of flexibility in that. I hope it answers. Thank you. Yes, no, thank you. Thank you to, to both of you. Okay, does the PsychStar scheme offer opportunities to get involved in research? I think um, some of the PsychStars have talked about that, but Emma, you want to say something? Yeah, I was you? just going to comment on that. I would say that it's definitely not an easy way to get research. I just, I know research within med students is quite a people think that they need to do quite a lot of it and people are trying to find lots and lots of easier ways to get involved in it because it is really tricky and I don't think that it's a quick or easy way to get it but if that's um, if that's like your sort of primary interest you can definitely go to your mentor and say I, re I really want to get involved with the research that was the kind of main thing that I wanted to thought that I might want to do with it. Thank you Emma. Declan did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, just to kind of um, extend from that, really. I mean, I think what Emma says is very true. I think, you know, uh, I suppose the advantage of the PsychStar scheme is it opens those doors for you to then maybe get involved in research in the future. I mean, one of the things that mentors will, will be keen to do is to um, harness your interest. So if you've got a specific interest in a, a research project, you, there's no reason at all why you can't extend that beyond the 12 months of the scheme. Um, so, you know, you, you maintain those those contacts and, and that networking. And I think that's one of the benefits of the scheme. But, yeah, you've got to be realistic. You're not going to churn out three publications in 12 months of, of, of being involved with the Psychstar scheme. Thank you, Declan and Emma. OK, just bear with me. OK, uh, I would like to use the psych star funding for an elective, but it is in my final year. I can't change this. Can I save the funding for final year? Declan, can I put this one to you? Yes, unfortunately, we can't transfer the uh, funds over. It has to be used within the 12 months of the scheme. So it's um, I'm afraid it's use it or lose it. Um, so it has to be spent within the 12 months of the scheme, uh, I'm afraid. Thank you. OK, could I use the CPD fund to go to conferences in Australia or the US to network with psychiatrists abroad? Tommaso, I think if you've got an answer to this one from your experience. So is it. Oh, sorry, we've lost you. We've lost you, Tommaso. Uh, Georgia, are you able to mute Tommaso? Oh, there we go. He, he's... Sorry about this. Clearly having an issue. Can you hear me now? Hear you. So what we're going to do is mute you and point the question to another. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Declan, could you answer that one, please? Um, can I use the CPD fund to go to conferences abroad? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. The, the the CPD fund. I mean, I think the um, you know um, the, a lot of the site stars will use the majority of the CPD fund to attend conferences and events. Um, and there's no reason at all why you why you can't go to conferences abroad. Uh, you know, I think it's an excellent opportunity to do some networking, uh, particularly if it's in an area of psychiatry you're particularly interested in. Um, you know, I, I've I've never been uh, I've never been abroad to a psychiatry conference. I'd like to go one day, but you know, the psych star scheme represents a fantastic opportunity. And I'm, you know, and I'm very aware from listening to Tommaso and Michael today that you know that that's one of the things that they've done. So yeah, we would encourage that. Thank you, Declan. Another great question: Does mentorship continue after the scheme, and can you maintain a relationship with the college post psych star? I think Declan, I'll ask you to answer that one. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you know, I think one of the great things about the mentoring is that it doesn't have to stop at the end of 12 months. Um, uh, and, you know, there's no reason at all why you can't continue uh, that mentoring relationship, albeit, you know, uh, unofficially, so not as part of the Star scheme, but beyond the 12 months. And 
Um, you know, I think lots of our side stars are probably doing that, that, that have kind of been involved with the scheme and are now going into the foundation training. They maintain those relationships with their mentor um, and, you know, they continue to to sort of um, maintain regular contacts uh, with them. So, yeah, again, it's something I would encourage you to do is to try to maintain uh, maintain that. Uh, and the other part of the question, Hayley, was was would the college... What was the second part? Uh, well, it, it was it was does mentoring continue after the scheme has ended and um does the college continue to can you still be involved in the college? Oh yes, and absolutely. You know, one of the one of the great things about the RC psych is that we want to uh welcome uh you know medical students at a very early stage. Um uh, and uh, you know, once you get involved with the college. I would strongly commend you to maintain that involvement with the college and continue to to link in and you know um, maintain your sort of close relationship with the college. So the college would certainly welcome you, uh, and you know we would want you to then obviously become core trainees, higher trainees, and eventually consultant colleagues. Thank you, Declan. I think the next one will be for one of our site stars. What sort of activities can be used to meet the demonstrating an interest in psychiatry criteria? Who would like Michael? Thank you. Yeah, I think I touched on it a little bit. Um, basically, I think so. The way I found out about Psych Start scheme to begin with was an eponymous scheme that I know runs in several medical schools um, in the UK called Psych Start with a T, which is um, similar in a way that we're being linked up with uh, psychiatrists in our sort of region within the medical school. Um, and I think. That, that was that also ran throughout the year and then I'm still in touch with with that mentor of mine but that was definitely um something I mentioned in my application um but it almost felt like the next step to to move on to the, the college scheme um just look up uh, any events that might be happening within your medical school it doesn't have to be directly psychiatry it could be could be psychology I mean one of the beauties of the field is how interdisciplinary uh, it can be and um uh, I myself have come from more of a neuroscience side of things. Um, yeah, I don't know if and Emma or Thomas, you have anything to add? No, that's Emma, do you want to say something? I was just going to say it's a really difficult question to answer because I think it is so difficult to get extra things, or at least I found it really difficult, particularly like clinical experience. But I was thinking before I applied the first time and didn't get it having had a little bit of clinical experience and then intercalated and didn't actually gain any extra clinical experience in that time and was successful that time around so I think as long as you have a bit of a plan for what you want to do and you've done something that you can really emphasize your that can really emphasize your interest I think that that's kind of enough if you have a bit of a plan thank you Emma can you hear me now yes we can to my okay. I'll take this window of good connection. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with what sort of Michael and Emma said. Um, what I would add is obviously, I'm sure the, the college will sort of appreciate that there are differences in terms of clinical exposure of the different medical students. I think what, what they want to see from the application is there's been some thinking and some uh, sort of reflection about what it is that sort of attracts you to psychiatry probably. And that's why in my in my sort of slide I mentioned the book, you know, because as long as or it can even be an encounter with a patient that made you, you know, think about psychological components of medicine. Um, it, 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 as long as there's some elaboration in there, and I think it will it will be fine. Um, Thank you, Tommaso. Thank you, all of you, for answering that question. Um, Okay, what do we have next? Uh, okay, I'm going to put this one to Declan. Would you recommend applying as many times as possible or build up a strong application before applying? Um, that's a good question. I, I suppose um, the simple answer to that is there's, there's no right or wrong way of, of, of doing it, really. I mean, I suppose the only thing I would say is that you have to be a medical student for the full 12 months. So um, you know, it's worth bearing that in mind when you are thinking of submitting an application. Uh, I suppose the most important thing I would say is, you know, if you're not successful the first time you apply, don't be put off applying again so long as you're within the eligibility criteria. 
Um, I think the most important thing uh, that I would say to all potential applicants is try and get someone senior to um you know read over your application get your uh, friends and colleagues to to read over it um and and just you know if you can get that kind of senior support and and you know all of the undergraduate psychiatry leads at all the uk medical schools are very aware of the psych star scheme and um you know Haley and i do a lot of work uh along with the careers team with encouraging the undergraduate leads to support medical students at their medical school to submit an application try and you know seek out that person because um you know i think that's really helped applicants in the past submit as strong an application as possible um so if you can do that then that's great i guess that's easier for some people than, than others but i certainly you know recommend you try and at least find out who the undergraduate lead is and and try and see if they can support you Thank you, Declan. There's a few questions around CVs. So I think um, I'll spend a bit of time on these questions. So the first one is, how do we write a CV without any information about specific institutions? Declan, do you want to answer that one? Um, yeah, I mean, I, su I suppose um, the simple answer is you write your CV and then remove any uh, identifiable institutions. I mean, you know, it's, the CV really is an opportunity to kind of, you know, summarise and demonstrate what experience you already have and, and you know, perhaps relate that to how that makes you a strong applicant for the scheme. Um, you know, we're only expecting your CV to be one page long. Uh, and, you know, and I, I mean, I must admit, I've been amazed by the CVs that uh, medical students have submitted for the psych style scheme because they've done so so much what you really want the cv to show is the breadth of your experience and how it kind of makes you an, an ideal applicant and and if possible can can sort of you know demonstrate some of that um prior experience and interest that you have in psychiatry i guess that's not always possible particularly if you're an early years medical student and that's fine and i wouldn't let that deter you from submitting an application um, but it is really important that, you, you, that we don't have personal um, identif identifiable information on, on the CV because um, the sh um, the marking process itself is, is anonymized, uh, and there's you know there are very good reasons Declan, for that. Sorry, Declan, we lost you for a, for a minute. Oh, there. sorry. Where, where did I get to? Uh, we have you back now. That that's fine. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. No, 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 no worries. Um, just sticking with the questions around CVs. Um, somebody has asked, with the removal of identifiers, does this apply to awards also? Um, yeah, and any any information that can lead to identification of an institution or of a medical school or. Uh, charity or, or company or anything like that I would remove obviously include any awards that you've received uh, but it's important that, that we um, that you anonymize that so that th there's a fair process in place uh, when it comes to scoring all the applications we have to make sure this is a fair process uh, so so it is it is really important that you remove that um, information that may be able to identify uh, a particular institution or medical school for example Thank you, Declan. Um, just seeing if there are any more questions around CVs. Can you include completed courses on your CV? Yes, I would say that you can. Um, okay, let's go to another question. Is it likely a first year will be successful? Declan, would you like to answer that one? Um, there's no reason why a first year medical student can't be successful uh, with applying to the scheme. Um, I mean, I, I expect you may well have not done an awful lot of clinical placements as a, as a first year medical student. I guess that might depend on which medical school you're at. But, you know, ultimately, um, you know, if you're following the requirements of the application process and, and you're answering the questions appropriately, um, there's absolutely no reason at all why a first year medical student can't be uh, successful in being appointed to the scheme and I would certainly encourage first year medical students to apply to the scheme um, and if it so happens that you're not successful the first time uh, you know do what Emma did and, and reapply uh, and you've got a you know you're in a stronger position second time but yeah I would absolutely encourage you to, to do so. Thank you Declan um, let me see Okay, a question about the medical psychotherapy faculty not accepting applications this year. That's correct. They are not accepting those this year. And the question is, 
is it worth mentioning if we have an interest in psychotherapy in our general application so that if successful, we are more likely to be matched with a mentor with similar interests or would being specific work against us for an application for a general psych staff position to Declan? Um, so uh, I would say that that would absolutely be fine. I mean, the, the reason why um, the faculties are um, funding a psych star is to try and, um, I guess, advertise their own uh, subspecialty to, to the medical student body. And I suppose that's particularly important for some of the faculties like liaison psychiatry and perinatal psychiatry, because medical students generally might not get any experience at all or very little exposure to those particular uh, subspecialties within psychiatry. So it's a way of trying to generate undergraduate interest in those subspecialties. So if you apply to the general psych stars uh, with the college, um, absolutely mention your interest in medical psychotherapy. And if you were successfully appointed, what we would look to do would be to find you a mentor who is a medical psychotherapist. Um, and that's something we could absolutely do. Uh, and I wouldn't see that as being a problem at all. Um, I certainly uh, would encourage you to mention that as part of your application, that it's a specific area of psychiatry that you're interested in. So, yeah, that's not a problem. Thank you, Declan. Really glad somebody's asked this question because um, we haven't mentioned it so far. Are there interviews? Um, I can answer this one. Um, there will be interviews for the 10 college psych star positions and they will be sometime um, towards the end of April. Um, or early May. And for the faculty psych staff position, it is up to each faculty to decide whether or not they will have interviews. Um, at this stage, none of them have told us that they want to. So I'm assuming that they're not. Um, however, if that was changed, then it would be updated on the website. Okay, um, we have a question. Can you apply to both the college and faculty specific psych star schemes? And if so, how many can you apply to? I can go ahead and answer that. So yes, you absolutely can apply to both. And there is actually no limit on the number of faculty psych star positions that you can apply for. So long as you're confident that you can demonstrate your interest in the faculty psych star positions that you're applying. Okay. Um, is it possible to send our CV to someone not involved in the selection process to ensure the CV is correctly anonymized, avoiding the risk of disqualification? I think I can answer that as I received the applications last year. So the applications will go through to our careers mailbox and a member of our team will go through the application before we submit it to the markers. So if there was anything not anonymized appropriately, we would go back to you and ask you to do that. If you were having trouble doing something like redacting something on your CV, then we could support you to do that. So, um, so that, that should cover that for you. Okay. Um, are applications from graduate entry programs accepted? And what if you had a previous career in psychiatry research? Declan, are you able to comment on um, that? Yeah, so just because you're a um, graduate entry um, uh, medical student, that's absolutely fine. Uh, lots of our site stars are graduate entry students, actually. Um, uh, in fact, a, a large number of them. So uh, that's not a problem at all. Um, and the second question about uh, is it are you eligible to apply if you've had a previous background in psychiatry research? Was that the question? Yeah, I think yeah, so. that, that will be absolutely fine as well. Um, you know, I guess it puts you in a strong position in relation to being able to um, discuss your interest in, in sort of um, specific areas of academic psychiatry. So uh, that, that would certainly be a, a big positive uh, as well in terms of any application. Uh, but yeah, no, absolutely encourage graduate entry students to apply. Thank you, Declan. Um, I have one, I think this will be for our psych stars on the panel. A question, what kind of goals can our mentors help us achieve if we are not interested in research? For example, if we're interested in clinical psychiatry. Would any of you like to answer that, Tommaso? Yes, yes. I mean, I, as I mentioned, um, one of the things that I've discussed with uh, my mentor is the fact that I haven't had much exposure to addiction psychiatry, for example, and 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 he uh, sort of referred me to to a colleague of his 
um, who does practice in addiction psychiatry in London, where my medical school is. And, uh, and I'm trying to organize some clinical experience days um, with his team in the months to come. So I think that's absolutely fine um, to, to not have a particular interest for academic psychiatry, but ask um, for help on, on the clinical side of things. But correct me if I'm no, that, that sounds fine to me. Any other comments on that question? Hayley, can I, can I just add, because I think this is something that some applicants worry about, potential applicants. We're not just after academic psychiatrists. You know, one of the advantages of having a mentor is, is that opportunity to do things like taste of days arranged or taste of weeks or uh, support with electives, that sort of thing. So um, I wouldn't want anyone to think that they have to have a vested interest in academic psychiatry per se. Um, you know, it, it, the psych star scheme is about much more than just developing an academic interest. Uh, you know, for some psych stars, they might not have much of an academic interest at all. It's more about gaining more exposure to different subspecialties within psychiatry or increasing the level of exposure in a subspecialty that they're particularly interested in, whether that's general adult, older adult or forensic, etc. So, yeah, I just want to highlight that point. Thank you. Thank you both for, for that. Um, Another question, which is a helpful one, thank you for asking this. Where would you specify which faculty is your preferred one when applying? So there's no kind of um, hard and fast rule on this, but as long as you make it clear, so perhaps put it at the start of your um, PDF document somewhere or put it at the end so that it's easy easy to see. And um, yeah, just, just, just state clearly the order of preference so that we know which would be your preferred choice if you were fortunate enough to be offered um, all of the positions that you that you applied for. Okay, um, would you, this will be for Declan, I think, um, would you recommend only people who are planning on specialising in psychiatry, or do you think it would be suitable for people who are interested in psychiatry, but are unsure if they would like to specialise in the future? Yeah, that's a really good question, actually. Um, I mean, obviously, what we want is for the psych stars to be ambassadors for psychiatry as a specialty and, and you know, for the scheme itself. I mean, you know, I, I think this is the um, $64,000 question, isn't it? You know, do we do we sort of reach out and preach to the converted or, or should we be sort of targeting those who are kind of more sat in the fence who are perhaps thinking of psychiatry, but are also interested in other specialties as well? Um, I would say in response to that, if you've got an interest in psychiatry and you're thinking about it as a career, then that is certainly sufficient to apply to the scheme. Um, and hopefully, if you're successfully appointed to the scheme, that will um, that will only enhance your interest in psychiatry and make you more likely to want to consider psychiatry uh, as a career choice. So, um, you know, I wouldn't say that this is just purely for those who are absolutely 100% certain they want to do psychiatry as a career. Um, you know, and, and a lot of medical students are not sure what they want to do. So I think so long as you're thinking about it and you've got an interest in it, I think, um, if nothing else, the Psych Star Scheme will, will help develop that interest for you. Thank you, Declan. OK, um, so we're on to the final three questions um, for now. Have there been successful Psych Star applications from someone in second year before? As a second year myself, with limited opportunities to expose myself to psychiatry and emphasise my interest, it will be reassuring to know someone has someone has overcome these limitations in the past. Declan, I'm unsure if you've yeah. this because I'm, so I'm just trying to think now. I'm trying to think. I I I I know we've certainly had third year medical students successfully appointed. Um, I'm trying to think whether we've had a second year student appointed. Um, I, I wouldn't consider it a barrier um, and I would strongly encourage you to apply is what I would say. Uh, as I say, so long as you can submit a strong application, uh, there's no reason at all why just because you're in the second year of your uh, degree that, that you can't be successfully appointed. So, yeah, do do apply. Thank you, Declan. OK, um, final two questions. How many faculty psych stars are there per faculty? So at this time, um, my most up to date information is that all of the psych star, all of the faculties, apart from the Faculty of Intellectual Disability, are appointing one psych star. And my latest update from the Faculty of Intellectual Disability is that they will have three psych star positions. 
Okay, and that will um, will be updated on the website tomorrow. Thank you. And the very final question. So we're coming back to CVs, and I think I'll put this one to Declan. Would you talk about a scientific poster SSC related to psychiatry in your CV? Uh, yeah, I certainly think it's worth um, making sure that's listed on your CV. Uh, it might be something that you discuss in more detail uh, in terms of your uh, answers to the written questions, but certainly. Uh, I think, you know, your CV should include certainly anything that you've done or anything that you're involved with that is psychiatry related, um, you know, whether that's um, through your current, um, you know, medical degree or through a previous degree that you've done perhaps in psychology or, or, or you know, something science related, um, certainly do include that in your CV. Yeah. Thank you, Declan. Um, we've had one new question just pop in. Will this, will this scheme be present next year? So that would be 2024 to 2025. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> if I have anything to do with it, yes. Um, uh, what I would say is, uh, you know, the, the college is um, the college as an organisation is very supportive of the scheme. It's been running successfully now for four years. Um, you know, I think we've seen some great results with the scheme from a recruitment perspective in terms of recruitment psychiatry. We, we've come an awful long way, and I think the Psych Star scheme is um you know has played a major part in that so um i envisage the scheme continuing yes uh, next next year as well thank you declan um okay uh oh we've got quite a few coming through okay what i'm going to say at this point because we have eight minutes remaining um we'll spend three more minutes going through these and then if your question isn't answered we will uh you can contact the careers email careers at rcpsych.ac.uk after today so let's just go through these last couple of questions uh do you have to train as a pediatrician to become a child psychiatrist I'm gonna put that one to Declan uh no you don't if you if you're interested in child adolescence uh, mental health Normally, what you would do is um, after completing your two years of foundation training, um, you would then um, do your three years of core training and then apply for higher training in child and adolescent mental health CAMS, uh, which is a further three years. Uh, and then you would um, obtain your certificate of completion of training, CCT, in CAMS. So it's six years training in total. Um, there are now some uh, what we call CAMS run through, pro run -through posts which basically means uh, that you um, your CAMS training starts from your first year of uh, specialist uh, SHO training. So you do, um, you, you, you're automatically on a run through scheme for CAMS. Uh, and again, it's six years of training to become a CAMS consultant, but you don't have to have a background in paediatrics at all uh, to become a CAMS uh, consultant, no. Thank you, Declan. Okay. I I think, um, yeah, I think we've gone through all our questions, which, which is fantastic. What I will say is tomorrow when the application information goes live on our website at 9 a.m., we will upload our updated frequently asked questions document. So if you have any further questions after today, note them down, um, make a note to visit our website tomorrow, have a good read through the FAQ document. But if you identify that there isn't a question, there isn't an answer to your question on there, then please just email um, careers at RC Psych, and we will be very happy to answer your question or to contact Declan if we need him to answer it for you. So um, just to say thank you so much for joining us this evening. We appreciate it's an evening and you might have other commitments. So we really appreciate you making the time. Thank you so much to Declan, to Emma, Tommaso and Michael for giving up their time this evening. It's been really valuable to, to hear from you. And Declan, did you want to make any closing comments? Um, yeah, well, firstly, just to say a massive thank you to Hayley and Claire uh, for doing all the work behind the scenes. Uh, this information evening uh, wouldn't go ahead without uh, all the um, administrative work that they do and Georgia as well. So I just want to say a huge thank you to, to all of those guys. And um, what I would say is, you know, do spread the word. You know, if you're interested in the scheme, talk to your medical student colleagues about it. Speak to your undergraduate uh, psychiatry leads or anyone involved in undergraduate psychiatry at your medical school. Um, do try and speak to previous psych stars. Um, 
uh, and and do apply for the scheme. And um, you know, I'm really looking forward to reading the uh, applications. Uh, and I wish you all the very best of luck with um, with your application. It's a fantastic scheme to be part of. I really wish something like this had been around when I was a medical student. Um, uh, and it never fails to amaze me just how high the standard is, um, in, you know, in relation to medical students that, that get involved with the scheme and the things that they do in the 12 months. So, you know, this is a really great scheme that the college runs. So do get involved uh, and uh, good luck with your applications. And, and thank you guys for joining us so late in the evening. And particularly thank you to Michael, Tommaso and Emma for giving up their time as well. It's great to have psych stars actually contributing to this and giving their own personal experience. Uh, you know, I think that's really helpful for you guys.